This year is my turn to uh, to talk to you. So um, the subject chosen is uh, development and deployment on the JVM. Uh, much of the a lot of work has been done on, on it, but lots of it is not documented and not all of it is available freely on the, on the web. So I've taken the opportunity to put down a few of the knowledgeable things in, in, in slides and hopefully some of you get inspired by the subject to try out ABCL and uh, do what we have to uh, have available for you, play with what we have available for you. Um, about me, I'm now for three years an independent business analyst, which means that I try to translate user requirements into IT programming requirements, uh, mostly in the area of financial reporting, which means that I have been working on um, mostly contracts with banking and financial institutes, other financial institutes, in the uh, financial reporting controlling departments. Um, and next to that, I have now recently started a new business, FSC.com, which is a cloud-hosted open source uh, application service provider, and we host an enterprise resource planning system for small and medium businesses, uh, with the great benefit that we take out all of the maintenance for you, but if you want to leave, you have the open source software available to go elsewhere. So there's no vendor lock-in at all, uh, which is, I believe, we are the only proposition to offer that. Uh, next to that, I have a history of open source development, both for the Subversion project, uh, which started in 2000, my involvement started in 2003, the Ledger SMB project, which is the software we run on FSC.com, and of course, the reason why I'm here, uh, our bare list implementation. Um, the, I thought I'd run you by the ABCL development process, progress quickly. Uh, the sheet I also presented to you, I believe, a year and a half ago on, um, in Amsterdam. M many of the goals we stated back in 2008 when we started working on ABCL 0.0.10 um, have been achieved and the last point, the 1.0 release, was actually the milestone to achieve back in Amsterdam. Um, so back in Amsterdam we es estimated AMOC compliance or AMOC protocol implementation um, to be established in version 2.0 somewhere in the far future, uh, and I must say that we're very glad to be able to say that uh, we, with the efforts of Rudy Schlatter, um, we were able to change that, but first uh, we have done, a lot of, had, had lots of things have changed in the Lisp community, especially with respect to the tools we as implementation developers can use. We have always, once our ANSI, com ANSI list failures, ANSI list test failures were down to tens, we have tried to improve the practical usability. Can I run libraries which are freely available on the web on the implementation of MCL? Well, with the coming, uh, with the advent of QuickList and especially the SEAL test grid project, we are now able to assess that uh, in an almost integral manner. We were just running Maxima tests or other libraries at individual moments, but now we can safely say that we know how well we're doing. Um, so we're integrally measuring practical usability, and we're using the feedback from the SEAL test grid and QuickList projects to improve those points where people are most likely to run into and actually improve the uh, fact that you can use ABCL as any other common lisp implementation on your projects. So, the state of today is that um, Mark just uploaded the release candidate for ABCL 1.2, which 
has nearly or full com closer to more uh, test case uh, completion. Oh, no failures anymore. Um, it runs lots because of that. Runs lots and lots of traditional quick list libraries, and especially the ones which have high download figures, mostly require closer to mock. So, and we have some other long-standing bugs fixed, which would uh, prevent certain libraries from running. So we have, of course, new next steps defined. We have we have a long-standing issue with the pretty printer and grace the extreme implementations not mingling well together and it requires some deep rewiring of, of, of a restructuring of, of some parts of the implementation so we never really got into it but now that we have the AMOC protocol in place we really should get down to this one um, and of course as ever we work on optimizing the implementation draw size execution speed etc So, what do you what do people use ABCL for? Well, uh, for a fact, I know that there are a number of commercial uses which have not been publicly announced on the web. Um, one is that it's being used as uh, a scripting language or a commercial web-based, a different one, by the way. Uh, Enterprise Resource Planning System, which is completely coded into Java, but the owner of the system wanted a scripting language for customization and trigger implementation, which would allow him to, uh, well, uh, adapt the, the software quicker than he would be able to do so in, in Java for other custom customers. <laughs> and he has embedded ABCL as a scripting language in his implementation. Um, my own my own use is to use it as an embedded application engine. So although I have an application where which I will be showing you in a bit, where the UI is all Java, but the actual business logic is, is implemented in uh, ABCL in in, in Compass. And I know for a fact that Hans is using uh, <laughs> it in a standalone manner, not embedded. But I was about to ask Hans during the break. I didn't get to that. <laughs> um, so why use ABCL? Well, for me personally, these are the items. I it is a cross platform. Back when I had to decide, it was a cross platform UE. Um, I as as pointed out in, in the talk before. What do we have on UE choices? Well, within the list community, not not very many which are platform independent. So. Uh, the uh, Java situation was a lot better, and this was one of the reasons. Um, also, ABCL uses a VM model, but uh, and a vast amount of resources are being spent on creating a quicker, better performing JVM and garbage collector. Well, we're a three, four developer man team. We don't have the resources to actually spend a lot of time on GC performance, but we tap into the resources that we can get from Sun and Oracle these days. Um, and as I said, one of the other reasons for uh, the other commercial implementation is to be able to run code in the same image which is running a Java application which needs customization. And the last one, last point which counts for, for my business very much is customers want to hear it's Java based <laughs> because that's what they support in their data centers. So how does it work? Um, well, I have a picture of, of, of the application. It's, it's a desktop application that I'm offering uh, through, through the Hux consulting business. It's a tool which helps financial controllers create a budget reason about it and calculate that. Um, it's, it's a tool which defines a DSL in which we create, uh, in which the business defines its, its, its financial operations and then in common list I code out 
the business logic which drives the calculation of the model as specified. So how does that work? Well, in, in, in a general overview, view, we have the Java UI, which is entirely written in, in Java and uses all the Java interface builders, etc., which you can't use once you get past a certain point. Um, and then to make sure that the Java side looks or works as much as Java can work um, and, and feels like Java, and in the end, maybe if, if, the, if the application grows, Java programmers can work on it. There is a bridge which translates all the Java events and, and, and calls APIs into Lisp world. The Lisp world feels a bit odd. I'll have a screenshot of that in a, in a bit. Um, and it's it's nice to have a Java feeling of the of, of the world because because you get into the technicalities. It doesn't feel it feels too technical on the, on the side. Then there is the CL code, which is just the custom code implementing the, the calculation drivers, etc. And then you have the CL libraries, ABCL jar, which is the ABCL system. Well, all of that needs to be started, unfortunately, right at the beginning of the application, which is to that we don't have ABCL doesn't have a dump image or anything like that. We need to we need to start with a clean world. Uh, completely empty and every object needs to be created, instantiated separately, which means instantiating several thousands of symbols and packages and all that stuff, um, which takes a few seconds at startup. And then you have to load all the depending code, of course, which can take another amount of time. The basic startup that we do, which I said that the few seconds I mean that is a bare list system. It's not really the full common list system because ABCL loads the bits that you require, such as CLOS if you don't need it at the beginning. ABCL doesn't load it and it gets loaded whenever a CLOS related function procedure is, uh, is, is it a, or symbols being referenced. And then, of course, the results have to be passed back through callbacks. Results, uh, error generation mechanism, which would amount to um, a hybrid of handling Java exceptions or generating Java exceptions based on any uh, conditions generated in the, in the Lisp cycle. Um, well, this is a process which can take can take unfortunately a, a bit of time. Um, the, the, the instances that I have running in commercial production so far, uh, users have come to uh, start their application at the beginning of the week and close it up at the end and leave it running because it's well, what, what works best. The JVM needs to, uh, has a chance then to analyze and collect statistics on whatever functions get run off and then it gets quicker during the week. <laughs> um, so. What the application structure at startup will have a bit of uh, that is that the user starts Java, Java starts the application, the application needs to start ABCL, and only then it can start loading any CL code, which is all coded by hand at this time, uh, to do the loading. Um, I was very quick to see that the new ASDF version 3 includes a way to generate a concatenated FASL for, so a pre-compiled FASL for an entire ASDF system. And uh, that would eliminate the need for my manual loading of all the fossils uh, and load it without the need to actually drag in the additional ASDF dependency, which unfortunately takes another few seconds to load on ABCL. So, which tools do I do I use for for development? Um, well, on the Java side, there's Lots of tooling, but the tools that work best so far, and which I have also used to develop ABCL itself, is uh, NetBeans. We have on the on the ABCL side uh, build files, which are rigged for debugging, integrated debugging, right in the IDE, the NetBeans IDE, and uh, that works. Code inspection, etc. Everything works. Um, the event forwarding, code bridging, code, all of it is written. 
uh, with NetBeans as it is all written on the Java side. But then, as I said, the business logic is written in Common Lisp, and all of that is simply written using Emacs and Slime, where ABCL is running as a backhand most of the time, even outside of the of the application, because there's no need to generate any or to to um, yeah to, to generate any user interactivity because the, basically the model needs the events, and if you have the events. It doesn't matter if they're not coming from the UI. So that's how it works. And then on the um, make side, of course, we need to um, build the software. And uh, we use Ant, which ABCL uses itself as well as a main development uh, means for Java compilation. And Ant then fires off the ABCL executable, so the ABCL program, um, not the library to start ASDF and build all the dependencies. The result is then um, a normal, basically a normal, uh, a normal Java application as any NetBeans environment would generate one. Uh, there's some code samples, I think they're too small to read. So that's unfortunate. Um, so the, pro the problem is that you have to create, in, in ABCL you have to create objects which are type agnostic, so for Java doesn't handle it, handle that. So we have a special, special types for everything that you would expect to be the normal built-in type in, in, in Java. We have, a, we have a Lisp stream which is the a subset a subtype of, of a common Lisp object type, which makes it possible for us to detect, determine, uh, to declare a type of no agnostic problem. So we have, we have here, for example, uh, a, 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 a function returning a Lisp object, and that Lisp object uh, is, is type agnostic, so you can return anything there uh, from uh, a string to basically even things which have not been defined in, in, the, in the list world, as in the list spec. Um, and this is my the point here, the point why I said it's, it's pra practically practical to have a bridge, is that on the list side you need to create a fun function call with a function and arguments which have to be translated between Java type and list types. And that makes it a little bit uh, well, technical and you get out of the flow of thinking if you have to do that every time and time again. So it's concentrated in one place. The additional benefit of that would be that in, in due course, the backend can be moved to a calculation server, application server using um, other APIs and then even running in the same image and have uh, a dis distributed model. Um, currently on application startup, there are lots of technicalities to generate the, uh, to, to, to actually load the code into the, to the, to the image. UI design is just your normal NetBeans um, environment where you stick all the controls in place and then code all the events that are required. Um, those events, events can call back, call into Lisp, and what happens is that the Lisp image, as I depicted earlier, call back with the data required, or, right? and that allows for. Uh, Java still doesn't have, by the way, a real multi-processing thing where you have to, uh, okay, where you can draw things in multiple threads at the same time, so you have to all serialize it back to the main thread. Um, this mechanism allows that as well because when the callbacks come back the results can be calculated off thread and be projected back to the main thread quite easily and then um, the usual of course on, on the Emacs side to create CL code um, which can be evaluated tested etc or in the, in the uh, slime buffers then on the deployment side, 
Uh, it's simply a main application jar. That's how NetBeans delivers its its, its application. So there's a top level application jar which you can double click and the application starts. And there's a library library directory which contains all the dependent jars. And uh, well, the CF, the commonly facils pre-compiled facil simply can get can can be stored in the same directory and, and loaded and the application started or hopefully later in a um, separate thread. So for now that, that, that mechanism uses uh, I, I designate each file separately but as soon as I get around to actually implementing the uh, concatenated facil support on my side that it will be single load command which then loads all this. And this directory can simply be zipped or even passed around unpacked and it runs off a simple USB stick, or it can be run on any other media type that can store, even as read on 8, eight megabytes of, 20 megabytes of uh, storage. So, time's not completely up, but that, that was the estimate. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going a bit quicker than, than, than expected, but uh, the server container deployment is um, actually available as an example in the in, in the in the code repository. Uh, so it, if you're interested in that, that's a good place to have to start, and it's actually no more complicated than what I just described for the rest of it, except that there's already. Uh, uh, Call that a call, calling interface available. You simply, simply need to place in your common list code uh, to handle to handle all requests. So that's about creating and deploying applications on the JVM. As far as I'm concerned, uh, what I can have learned myself and remains as a remain until yet uh, undo undocumented. Um, does anybody have any questions that want to go into our remarks, maybe? Okay. Can Java pass a function into this and this invoke it with appropriate arguments? Um, yes, well then, yes. Um, in and so the example far. you had was, was, was passing a list function into Java. Yes. Well, I have I have it both ways. Okay. Um, uh, of, of course, it's it's uh, the, the the issue is that Java doesn't have a lambda of any, of any kind, so you're kind of stuck to um, defining interfaces and creating class instances, which can be passed around uh, if they adhere to the right protocol, which would be then uh, being a Lisp object, then it can be simply passed around. Yes. Then you can invoke. Uh, you Java can invoke it. Yes, you can invoke Java methods. Java method methods, exactly. Well, there's also an FFI which invokes Java methods directly on Java instances. So you can um, pass pass in a Java instance and say, okay, I want to call method X Y Z on that uh, with these parameters, and ABCL will try to figure out the best match of all methods X Y Z. Based on the argument types. So Thanks. it's either way. Thanks. Yeah. Other questions? E. That's probably a dumb question because I've never used ABCL, but uh, if you're uh, concerned about optimization and uh, uh, you were in a situation where in another level list you would write something like declare fix now. So yes. could you do something similar where you don't have to wrap uh, things in a list object but use? The immediate Java types. Yes, um, so far, ABCL compiler, compiler isn't extremely smart, but within uh, functions, ABCL un, um, unboxes values wherever it gets declaration hints. Okay. Um, unfortunately, that may end up being a counter counterproductive thing, and it's not smart enough to, to detect that because function arguments. Uh, Within function calls are always uh, boxed. So if you unbox and you need to rebox it ten times over again later on, 
it's kind of productive. But with the right kind of, of, of profiling, you should be able to find out per that which one is whichever is is, is, is quicker. Mm-hmm. Yes. More questions. Uh, are there examples of Android applications run on The question is: Is it possible to run ABCL on Android, and are there any examples of that? The answer to that is yes, it is possible. Um, Mark has, uh, Mark Hilson has uh, a few patches which make it possible. That is, it's not possible out of the box because we depend on a few Java types which are not available on the Android Java uh, SDK. And there isn't a compiler. Right, and, and we can't compile, we can only interpret on, on, on Android because the class file format is not the same on Android as it is on the JVM. But we would gladly find other people who have time and willingness to help us achieve this goal because it's definitely a direction that we feel is appropriate. Yes? How could be is the slide swing kind of stuff? I'm just wondering what it's like to develop uh, with ABCL. Um, it, it is relatively complete. It's um, one of the things that that's missing is that in compiled code, the variable allocation has been compiled away and you can't inspect without... Um, the, the ABCL image cannot inspect its own stack. So there is... we would have to do a, make an intermediate format of the stack to actually be able to do to, to inspect that in a, in a deep special debugging mode. But, so, but other than that, um, objects can be inspected. There are lots of other features in Slime which do work. And uh, well, I must say that last time I used it, I, I, myself I used mostly, mostly use NetBeans and inspect the raw objects. Uh, but, but that's more of a historical thing. It's what was there when I started. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's doable, but it's not, not, not yet complete. Uh, I mean, Mark, do you have any? Yeah, no, most, it, you can grab some from top, uh, so with some things that are efficient, in, so we have a, we can't set a breakpoint in this, okay? And uh, we have no documentation of stack, which is allowed by the answer. So, <coughs> some maybe you can go to the stack, grab the stack, and we cannot, because of the JVM, we cannot resume Computation at an arbitrary point off the stack. We can't pop stack or stuff like that. But other than that, I think most everything works. Uh, Inspector certainly is nice. We can see everything. Uh, C loss methods show up. Um, oh, one, one kind of efficiency is that uh, there's the who calls, the stuff that uses the X-ray. That's not currently working, but that would probably, that's probably not that hard to do. Hard to do. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, so relatively complete. My, my typical pattern is to, you know, do a control C, control C on this function to, to run. That works fine. So that's how I debug. Go to the function, maybe add a few print statements, control, get it in the interpreted version, and then that really works. That really works. Okay. More okay. well, questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.